cspan.org or listen with the free C-SPAN radio app. On Saturday, four-term Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard of Hawaii officially launched her 2020 presidential campaign with a speech in Honolulu. This is just under 30 minutes. Aloha! Aloha, I can't hear you. There we go. Thank you all so much for being here. It's a beautiful day in Hawaii. Growing up here in Hawaii, I loved swimming and surfing and having fun in this paradise that we are so fortunate to call home. But I gradually realized growing up that I was actually happiest when I was doing things for other people doing things to protect our water, to protect our oceans, our land. I felt that this was a different kind of happiness than anything else I experienced when I was just thinking of myself. It was a deeper happiness that stayed with me anywhere that I went. I knew then that no matter what path I ended up choosing in my life, that I wanted service to be that foundation. I'm proud to serve our country as a soldier. I'm a major in the Army National Guard where I've served for the last 15 years. And I'm so grateful to have the opportunity to serve the people of Hawaii in so many ways over the years. In the state legislature where I was elected at 21, serving over 100,000 people in the Honolulu City Council, and now for over the last six years, serving in Congress. Thank you for your trust and your aloha. I'm truly grateful. Our nation was founded on the principle that our government should be of the people, by the people, and for the people where all people are treated equally and with respect in these United States of America. But today, that vision seems like a far off dream, where hatred and divisiveness have cast a dark shadow across our country. We're being torn apart by powerful, self-serving politicians and greedy corporations, people fomenting hatred bigotry and fear, inciting conflict between us because of the color of our skin, the way that we worship, or the political party we might belong to. This corruption of spirit is driven by greed and selfishness, and it is eroding the very fabric of our society and democracy itself. This is not who we are, America. The very best of our nation is exemplified by our nation's veterans who embody what it means to put service above self, who've sacrificed their own personal interests out of a greater love for our people and our country. Because love is not just a feeling, it's a powerful force, a force that drives us to act, to put service above self, and our men and women in uniform, generation after generation, motivated by love for one another and for our country, have been willing to sacrifice everything for us. They don't just raise their hand and volunteer to serve only to fight for one religion but not another, to fight for people of one race but not another, people of one political party but not another, no. When we raise our right hand and volunteer to serve, we set aside our own interests to serve our country, to fight for all Americans. We serve as one, indivisible, united, 
unbreakable, united by this bond of love for each other and love for our country. It is this principle of service above self that is at the heart of every soldier, at the heart of every service member. And it is in this spirit that today I announce my candidacy for President of the United States of America. I will bring this soldier's principles to the White House, restoring the values of dignity, honor, and respect to the presidency, and above all else, love for our people and love for our country. So I ask you to join me. Join me in putting this, this spirit, this spirit of service above self at the forefront and to stand up against the forces of greed and corruption. Now, the road ahead will not be easy. The battles will be tough. The obstacles great. But I know that when we stand united by our love for our people and for our country, there is no obstacle we cannot overcome. There is no battle that we cannot win. John F. Kennedy once said, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. We must heed this call to action today at a time in our history where it is so badly needed. We must stand up. We must fight for the soul of our country. Stand up against bought and paid for politicians who kowtow to special interests, selling their votes to the highest bidder. Where instead of draining the swamp, our president has turned it into a cesspool of corruption. We must stand up against big pharma and insurance companies who extort those who are sick who put their profits above the health and well-being of our people. We have to fight to make sure that every single American gets the quality health care that they need through Medicare for All. We must stand up against the big Wall Street banks who gamble with our money and our future. Stand up against overreaching intelligence agencies and big tech companies who take away our civil liberties, privacy, and freedoms in the name of national security and corporate greed. We must stand up against those who pollute our land, our water, and our air. We must stand up against private prisons, who are profiting off the backs of those who are caught up in a broken criminal justice system. A system that puts people in prison for smoking marijuana while allowing corporations like Purdue Pharma, who are responsible for the opioid-related deaths of thousands of people, to walk away scot-free with their coffers full. This so-called criminal justice system which favors the rich and powerful and punishes the poor cannot stand. We must join hands and stand up against those who perpetuate bigotry, hatred, and violence against our brothers and sisters because of their race, religion, or sexual orientation. We must stand up stand up against this administration that claims to believe in America first, but who sells our troops, our weapons, and our interests to whichever foreign country is the highest bidder. We must stand up against those who dishonor our troops, treating them as political pawns and mercenaries for hire in wars around the world. 
We must stand up. Stand up against powerful politicians from both parties who sit in their ivory towers, thinking up new wars to wage, new places for people to die, wasting trillions of our taxpayer dollars, hundreds of thousands of lives, and undermining our economy and our security and destroying our middle class. Now, President Trump campaigned against regime change wars when he ran for president, but now he bows to the wishes of the neocons who surround him, clamoring for regime change wars that he claimed to oppose this time in Venezuela and in Iran. These powerful politicians dishonor the sacrifices made by every one of my brothers and sisters in uniform, their families, as they are the ones who pay the price for these wars. In fact, every American pays the price for these wars that have cost us trillions of dollars since 9-11. Every dollar that we spend on regime change wars or on the new Cold War and this nuclear arms race is a dollar coming out of our pockets. Dollars that should be used to address the very real urgent needs of our people and our communities right here at home. We must stand united and stand strong against those in both parties who never tire of war. Neocons and neolibs who drag us from one regime change war to the next and who are exacerbating the new Cold War, pushing us to the brink of nuclear war. We deserve better. Our country deserves better. Now, just over a year ago, people of Hawaii and our country thought we were under a nuclear attack. We saw college students running frantically across UH Manoa campus trying to find shelter. We saw a father lowering his daughter down a manhole to try to keep her safe. We saw families who piled their children into their car and drove to the mountains looking for a cave to find shelter. A mother cowering in a bathtub with her children. A father trying to choose which of his children he would spend the last minutes of his life with. There was no shelter. There was nowhere to hide. Now those of us who serve in uniform made a choice. We made a choice to put our lives on the line to serve our country, willing to pay the ultimate price. We volunteered for that. We chose that. But my six-year-old nephew, Malu, he didn't make that choice. You didn't make that choice. Our families didn't make that choice. Our troops volunteer to serve our country, to go to battle, to defeat those who threaten us, to keep the American people safe, to make it so while they are fighting on the front lines, you and your children can sleep soundly at night. But as powerful politicians beat the drums of war and ratchet up tensions between the United States and nuclear-armed countries like Russia and China, the front lines have come to our doorstep as we sit on the precipice of nuclear war. The reality is, right now, there are over 14,000 nuclear weapons in the world, many of them far more powerful than those that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki, enough to destroy the world many times over. Now, throughout the 20th century, during the Cold War with the Soviet Union, we were told we had no choice but to live in fear, that at any moment we could be annihilated by nuclear war. And children in schools practiced reacting to a nuclear alert hiding under their desks. 
Those who had money built bomb shelters. Those who couldn't afford it wondered if and how they would survive. And with the, the dissolving of the Soviet Union, that danger was supposed to have disappeared. But our leaders have failed us. Because today we face a greater risk of nuclear catastrophe than ever before in history. The situation is unacceptable. The president's most important responsibility is to serve as commander in chief. I will do so as a soldier who understands the seriousness of this responsibility. I want to take a moment to recognize and express our appreciation to our fellow veterans who have joined us here today. Please raise your hands and allow us to recognize you. Thank you for your service and your sacrifice. Those of us who have experienced firsthand the cost of war fight hardest for peace. I served in Iraq in 2005 in a medical unit where every single day I was confronted with the high cost of war and who pays the price. I take seriously the responsibility of securing our nation. I know that weakness invites aggression and that our men and women in uniform stand ready to take on and defeat those who threaten the safety and security of our people. I also know that our current foreign policy is undermining our national security it is depleting our resources and exhausting our military. As your commander in chief, I will work to end the new Cold War and lead us away from the abyss of a nuclear war that could destroy our world in mere minutes. I will build partnerships with other nations based on shared interests leading with the foreign policy, not based on conflict, but instead cooperation. I will end the regime change wars that have taken far too many lives, cost trillions of dollars, and undermined our security by strengthening terrorist groups like Al-Qaeda and ISIS. And I will have the courage to meet with both friends and adversaries in the pursuit of peace and our national security. Because if we lack the courage to meet with those we disagree with, the only alternative is war. Now, bending the arc of history away from war and towards peace will require every one of us to stand up against the military-industrial complex and powerful self-serving politicians who have a vested interest in perpetual war. Yeah. When I was deployed in Iraq, there was a big sign at one of the main gates to our camp. And that sign read in big block letters, is today the day. It was a stark reminder for all of us that any day could be our last. From the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep, I knew that that day could be my last. And it made me reflect, how am I making the most of the time that I have? This is the same reality that faces us us today. We have no time to waste. There is far too much at stake. So the choice is ours. In order to make this change, every one of us must answer the call to put service above self, to put the interests of our country over our own. We're motivated by our love for each other, 
and our love for our country, we will stand up, we will take action, and we will overcome. Now, love should not be mistaken for weakness. There is no force more powerful than love. It's love that causes a firefighter to run into a burning building to save the lives of total strangers. It is love that drives a mother to run in front of a speeding car to save the life of her child. It is love that inspires a soldier to lay down their life to save the lives of others. It is love that inspires every one of us to care for each other, to fight for each other, to fight for our freedoms, to fight for our country. Because what our country needs now more than ever is the spirit of aloha. That spirit of respect and love for one another and for our country. This is the most precious gift that Hawaii has to offer to our country and the world. Aloha. Because aloha is so much more than hello and goodbye. Aloha means I come to you with an open heart. I respect you. I have love for you and I care about you. Whether you are a friend or a stranger, I come to you with aloha. Regardless of the color of your skin, where you come from, how you worship God, who you love, or what political party you belong to. Dr. Martin Luther King saw this power of aloha when he first visited our islands and addressed our legislature in 1959. He said, we look to you for inspiration and as a noble example, where you have already accomplished in the area of racial harmony and racial justice, what we are struggling to accomplish in other sections of the country. And you can never know what it means to those of us caught for the moment in the tragic and often dark midnight of man's inhumanity to man to come to a place where we see the glowing daybreak of freedom and dignity and racial justice. After he returned back to the mainland, Dr. King said of his visit, as I looked at all these various faces and various colors, mingled together like the waters of the sea, I could see only one face, the face of the future. President John F. Kennedy, he also recognized this power of aloha when he visited Hawaii in 1963. And he said, we are proud of this city and this state and what it stands for. These islands represent all that we are and all that we hope to be. This is Aloha. And this change we need to see must begin in the White House because the White House should be a beacon of aloha, respect, love, and compassion for every American. Our nation was founded on the values and principles of putting service before self, rejecting the rule of kings who prospered from the sacrifices of the people, and forming a new nation founded on the premise that leaders should be motivated not to serve their own interests, but to serve the people. And deep inside the heart of every American is the love, honor, courage, and ideals that form the foundation of this country. Ideals that still shine in each 
and every one of us. Each of us and all of us must rise again now and come together for each other, our country, and the world. Our cause, our cause is to create a new and different path that reclaims our destiny and restores the uniquely American ideal to seek a higher purpose, greater than ourselves, and to put service before self. That is the cause that is calling to every American today. So I'm asking you to join me. I'm asking you, I'm asking you to stand with me to build a movement of peace at home and abroad that will fulfill the promise of America, of freedom, justice, equality, and opportunity for all. Thank you all so much. Mahalo nui loa, aloha. Tell she, tell she, tell she. Thank you so much. C-SPAN's Washington Journal, live every day with news and policy issues that impact